Hey everybody, thanks for watching. This is the HeatVac XL setup demonstration. This will show you how to take your HeatVac uh, from the out of the box state all the way to getting everything set up and assembled. So uh, the first thing that we uh, are going to want to do here is open up your package that contains the hose and gauge kit. It's got the gauge, the hose, adapter, and the pump adapter. First thing that I like to do is take one end of the hose kit and cut off a short section three to four inches. This is going to be used to connect to the gauge, like so. Then take the remaining hose, fold it in half to get an equal length, cut it approximately in half, and then you take a T-barb, this is called, one side in here, one side in here, and the pump on the final T. Piece of cake. Uh, this is an extra component here that's used for automotive uh, applications. This can be uh, discarded, recycled. Uh, next step is we want to take our heat pack. You want to put your O-ring in the uh, slot here. It'll come in the package uh, separate, most likely. Just slide it in here. If you like to, you can apply a drop of silicone. Uh, just make sure you don't interfere at all with the uh, seal. Then we put our lid on top. Here's the port. This is a three-way stopcock. Make sure the nut here, red nut, is tight, but don't over tighten it. It it's, uh, doesn't need to be tightened very hard. Go ahead and put that on here and you'll be able to see, the video will be hard to show, but there's a, an arrow on here that will tell you which uh, direction to point the valve to. Either suck the air out, hold the pressure, or you can pull the red plug and that will allow you to evacuate uh, or rather allow the air back into the chamber. Next we want to take our hose and gauge kit, hook one end up to the barb fitting on the chamber lid, and uh, that connection is not very sensitive. You can go ahead and push it on however is comfortable. It's not going to leak there. Next step is this is what's called a quarter inch flare to quarter inch barb fitting. This is what uh, is designed to come with the Robin Air pump. Uh, other pumps can have different style of thread patterns, so contact us if you have a different style of pump. We need help finding pump fittings. Uh, the Robin Air has a fitting right out the side. It also has a fitting out the top for different applications and included in the box with you when you get this will be a separate brass fitting. That's for other different applications that can be recycled or discarded as well. Um, make sure you tighten the black cap here snugly on the uh, other fitting. Also make sure that you, when you first get your pump, unscrew the uh, oil valve cap and go ahead and pour your bottle of oil that's included into there. And there's a fill level line on the side. You can see I have this overfilled uh, quite a bit right now. Sorry about that. If it's overfilled, you do run the risk of getting oil in your uh, suction lines. If it's underfilled, you can run the risk of having your pump run a little bit hot, but uh, generally it's uh, not going to be a big problem for you. And this uh, screw on the bottom is how you drain that oil. You're going to want to drain it once it starts to appear milky or cloudy at all. Next step is we want to attach this pump fitting directly to the pump. Screw it on and go ahead and use a uh, pliers to tighten it just so it's comfortably snug. It doesn't have to be cranked on again. The flare fittings are designed to be uh, airtight against pressure without any need for plumber's tape or Teflon tape, anything like that, so that's unnecessary for this application. Next, go ahead and take the other end of your uh, hose and gauge kit and pop around there. And uh, for the final step, we're going to demonstrate to you that uh, this is our temperature control unit. You can see it's not hooked up to the chamber right now. This is what kind of reading you're going to see. It says LLL. It's just not connected to anything. So it's just alerting you to that. No big deal. It's already plugged in and it's uh, preset to 100 degrees when you uh, receive the unit. Go ahead and plug in the quick disconnect plug. Again, no need to over tighten. This is already airtight. Just connect it gently until it's uh, electrically sealed. And here you can see the temperature started out at about 75 room temperature. It's racing up to 100 now. Uh, we have a separate video we'll show you where we uh, 
uh, check the temperature as with a laser on the disc to uh, show you how the temperature is uniform between the disc and the digital readout to show that it's accurate. Um, when this is first turned on, the disc is heated from underneath with a uh, heater and it runs all along the underneath of this disc. Uh, when it's initially turned on, it'll overshoot just a little bit until the disc absorbs heat um, and uh, conducts it evenly so that the temperature is even throughout. The overshoot will minimize down to about 2 degrees up. So here it's set at about 100. You can see once it hits 99 it'll turn on. Heats up to about 102, then it turns off, cools back down naturally, and then it turns back on and cycles over and over. So maintains a very uh, stable temperature. Another thing to point out is when you have a mass on here, say uh, something you're extracting or purging, that added mass will absorb the heat as well and will help to make the temperature even more stable with less fluctuation. Everything is hooked up. The next step for someone who wanted to use this would be to make sure the valve is in the right position, turn the pump on, go ahead and evacuate the air. So that's all for our uh, setup video. Thanks a lot for watching. Uh, thanks for visiting the website and thanks a lot for your interest guys.